Hello, all you hardcores. I'm joined by Adam. How are we doing, Adam? The king of York, sure. What's a crack? How are you, Russell? I'm all right. I'm plodding on, mate. Uh, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Just same as yourself, just trucking away, uh, trying to keep the beak as clean as possible and have a bit of fun in between. So all good, mate. All good. How's California, Adam? It's grand. Wee bit of a war zone at the minute. Uh, no more than usual. Um, but sun shining and um, myself and the dog, we're only five minutes from, from Golden Gate Park, big national park over here. So um, and there's not too much craziness in there, mate. You, you and the pooches would like it. It's very nice. So, um, so yeah. Good man, good man. I'm just sat here. I've had a very, very, very long day today, right? And do you know what? You know when you're at it like 13 hours from 6 o'clock? Mm-hmm. You have a shower, you sit down, you stick some Mexican chicken in the microwave, I'm going to have that in a bit. I've just cracked up in a can of Stella Artois. No, we're talking. You know what? You know when you add one for a bit, it tastes really nice, doesn't it? Instead of you have it every day. <laughs> oh, man, for sure. A cold beer when you haven't had one in a while is hard to beat. No doubt about it. Uh, that's a long day, though, too, mate. Well, just well justified. I get pulled about all over places. You know when you try and please everybody, Adam. It, it, it just it just uh, you just walk worn out, aren't you? You know what I mean. Com completely, mate. You can you can only spread yourself so thin before um it starts to take a toll on you. So I get it, mate. En enjoy that beer, well deserved. I'm only having one, but when I'm done tonight about nine o'clock, that be fifteen hours in bank. Do you know what I mean? Been at it all day, but I've got loads done today, so I'm really, really happy because you know what? I've been tossing it off lately. I think my mind's on other things. Do you know what I mean? And if you can't concentrate, it's, it's a waste of time putting it all out, and it? it's pretty shite out, aren't you? It, it is, man. Like it's you're better off recharging your batteries if yeah. you're not feeling if you're not feeling at it. Like you said, there's no point in putting out a bad product. So take take a day, take two days, recharge the batteries. And come back with those uh those sermons that we all love. <laughs> oh, sermons, yeah. I've, uh, I think uh, the to be honest with you, you know the Porkies International, you know the other channel that we've got. Yes, sir. Start doing that. That's not mine. That's Kevin's. That like, he he wanted his own little thing, like so. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out with that. And uh, it's going all right, actually. Uh, it's going all right. It looks like there's could be a sponsor coming on board. So it's all positive. It's not boxing. It's mainly cricket at the moment, like uh, so. Obviously, I'm not first club cricket, but uh, yeah, it's good. Good to di the channel is great, and it's good to diversify. You know what I mean? Um, uh, wider audience and all that. So no, man, good project. Fair play to you. I, I like to see it. I've got everybody and the dog trying to cut my legs off for this one, but they still that took a life off me. <laughs> no, there'll be there'll, there'll be another wild try, and hey. Oh my it. god, there's some dedicated uh, haters out there, the kids. Too many of them. If they focus the energy into the right places, they'd be dangerous, wouldn't they? Get the claiming benefits. <laughs> as 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 Jack Nicholson said in The Departed, they call that a paradox, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go straight in then, balls deep. Uh, what did you think about the Crystal Palace football ground show? Do you think it? Do you think they might have been a little bit too big for Bill and Smith React Porte, uh, Adam? Uh, a wee bit. I mean, I wouldn't know. I haven't been to London since I've been yeah, a teenager, so I haven't been there in a long time. But I know Terry was saying that Selhurst Park is a nightmare to get in and out of, Um, you know, as, as most of London is. But he was saying it's particularly difficult. Um, I tuned in. Because I think whatever deal they have, there's a broadcaster over here, an app, so they get the Sky stuff. But they only kind of come in uh, for the main event, you know. So I only started watching from the Aziz fight. Um, and, you know, it was still obviously sunny outside or it was still daylight. And, you know, it didn't seem like there was there was a big crowd in there. Obviously, it filled out a bit more. Um, it's hard, though, man, like finding that, that happy medium between you know, like a copper box and then between, you know, a smaller football stadium. It's it's a hard nut to crack in terms of, you know, you could nearly oversell a smaller venue, but then if you go into somewhere bigger, it's only half filled. So I don't, um, 
I don't pity the promoters and trying to kind of find that balance definitely in the UK where you want a good atmosphere but it probably was a wee bit too big um, and you know it didn't help that a lot of the fights you know there weren't too many barn burners if there were any barn burners in there so I don't think that helped either Paul you know yeah they weren't, uh, it wasn't that hot of a show what it really but I thought what I watched were brilliant I thought the first three fights were pony yeah. a bit better, didn't it? You know, uh, so we'll start near at bottom. We'll forget the first three. But what do you think to McKenzie's daughter, Fran Hennessy? You know, I only saw I only saw all wee bits on YouTube after the fact, man. Um, you know, it looked like she it looked like she dogged it out. Um, but like I said, I only saw wee snippets here and there. I mean, it's it's a decent story. Um. And you know, fair fair play to her. It seems like she's kind of fully committed in terms of you know her wanting to box. Obviously, she doesn't have to. So props to her. Um, but like I say, I didn't see the full thing, so um, I can't really comment on it too much. But uh, but no respect to her. I, I kind of respect, and this isn't for me trying to come across sexist. I respect kind of any man or woman, but specifically women that get into the ring. Um, so. Props to her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Dan Aziz, he drew we a waste, man. Where does he go now? Yeah, man, I, I was watching it. I was kind of, I was just waiting for the penny to drop. I thought that, you know, he would eventually kind of figure it out. Um. You know, round one, two, whatever. I got through three and four and five, and I had him down. You know, at best three two, potentially four one. Um, I didn't think he was winning the fight after five rounds. And uh I don't think I mean I I can I can see a draw. I don't think it was a draw. Like I, I had um I had set one and by probably a round. Um but when I saw Obviously, the referee was kind of was being the judge. We've seen that before. Do you remember in the Campbell Hatton fight when he was fighting the Italian that I thought he clearly lost? It wasn't that bad, but I think when it's hometown and the referee's kind of making the shout, you know, there's way bigger chance of um of kind of a hometown win or draw. But uh, look, regardless of the decision, I think anybody that watched the fight, they were expecting much, much more from him. I mean, he looked. He looked twice or three times a fighter in the Boatze fight, even though obviously he lost. But I think it was a much, much better performance. I don't know if he went in there and just completely took your man for granted. Um, was it a combination of him having a rotten night and your man having a career best night? I don't know, but it wouldn't fill me with confidence moving forward. Um, you know, you know where kind of I stand on the whole Buddy McGirt thing at this point in his career. I thought it was kind of more of the same. Um, you know, he told him going into the last round, you need to win this round, but it didn't kind of get any clearer from that throughout the fight. Stay on him, you know, give him pressure, this and that, when he obviously needed, you know, a hand from the corner. But no, it wasn't a good performance. I thought he kind of, I thought he, he he got lucky um, or he got away with one to get out of there with a draw. Um, but I don't think... Um, yeah, he didn't cover himself in glory with that performance, mate. I mean, who, who did you see winning that? How did you kind of score it, roughly? I had Dan Aziz getting beat. Yeah, me too. I thought he got beat. He got the draw because it's the home fight. When you're drawing with a bin man and you're <laughs> with a home fight and the big noise, Houston, we have a problem. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sir. I know exactly what you mean. Exactly what you mean. Um, I mean... Look, fight, fights aren't fought in paper. We all know that. But even coming off a loss where I thought, you know, he was well competitive in that Boatze fight, I thought the canvas robbed, it didn't rob him of a win, but it robbed him of a chance of winning late in that fight, you know, the slippages and stuff. Yeah. But I thought overall he was good against um, Boatze. But, you know, this was just, for what I, I don't know what the reasons are, but it was just a poor performance. I don't think... Even the biggest disease fan would try and convince you of uh, of anything else. So, got away with a draw. I think it kind of puts him down a peg, even domestically. Um, that's not to say, look, maybe he goes away, comes back. Um, he comes back better. 
but it should have been a fight on paper, or it was a fight on paper. He should have won comfortably. He didn't. Um, but uh, look, I, I'm not. I'm not hoping for his demise at all. He seems like a good character, a good man, um, and I would like to see him come back. I think we need as many good fighters domestically as we can get. Um, but I think he really needs to go back to the draw on board. I know it can kind of be a. I know it can be a gut reaction to say change trainers, and I think fighters changing trainers overall is rarely a good thing. Mm. Um, but I just don't rate Buddy McGirt at this point in his career. Who knows what goes on behind closed doors? But I think his um, I think his in-fight instructions and management are just very very poor. Um, so I'm not saying give him the boot, but um. If I were in, in Danazi's shoes, I would be having a, a good, hard, long think about it, you know? A lot of people are saying that Buddy McGurt is a mercenary. Hmm. And what has he done uh, with anybody from scratch? Yeah, I mean, look, but, but boxing and personal are, are obviously two different barrels of oil, but, you know, the whole thing with... um. Uh, with the Gaddy family, obviously, I don't know the specifics, but I know obviously they soured on him very, very much. And that would kind of lead you to believe that there was some, you know, badness going on in the background. Um, yeah, I think at this point in his career, Buddy McGirt, I mean, I think he's kind of, um, I think he's kind of riding on his uh, on his name and kind of what he's done in the past. Um but like but boxing's like anything, football, business, whatever, man, but everything changes with time. Um, and you know, maybe the game's passed him by. Um, I don't know, but to me, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rate him very highly as a coach in terms of what you see on the night. Obviously, we're not privy to what happens in the gym, but um, like you said, you know, he has no track record of bringing somebody from the word go and um, and kind of moving from there. So, I don't know, mate, I think he's I think he's well overrated, or maybe he's not. Maybe a lot of people don't rate him at this point, but uh. I think if he ever had any great days, Buddy McGirt, they're well and truly over. You know, he's just in the corner squealing like a stuck animal half the time um, and making noise um, where, you know, there's no... I mean, even a blind man could have seen that even with a hometown, even a blind man could have seen that his ease was kind of behind after five, six, uh, even four, you know, early in the fight. And he didn't make, you know, it was. it's not like he was able to make any... And he inroads himself or kind of change the complexion of the fight. I mean, to me, that's where, even if the advice isn't heated, you know, your trainer in the corner should have at least one rabbit up his hat. This game plan isn't working. L let's make a slight change, but it's just pressure him, stay on him, ba 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 ba. You know, so I don't know, mate. I think it's making noise for the sake of it. So I, I, I don't know. But like, again, the, the kind of easy, who does he go to? I think obviously we're big on Joe G, but I think, um, I think Joe G can work with anybody. Just one name that comes to mind. But um, I don't know who he goes to necessarily. But if I were him, I would be thinking long and hard about the, the Buddy McGirt matchup, in all honesty. Well, uh, Tyson Fury, he's uh, he's looking at uh, a new trainer, isn't he? but we'll come to that in a bit. But again, mm. back to Dan Aziz, I think he needs to go back to London and get a British trainer and go back to the drawing board if he's got any career left. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Again, specifically, I don't know which trainer, but I think at that kind of level, I think he would do well to find somebody, I'm not going to say worse than McGirt, but like you say, get back, get back to your roots, get back on home soil, Um, you know, get in the gym, be around kind of, you know, even like the likes of, I'm not saying trainers can change it overnight, but, you know, there's talk of, you know, obviously AJ's teamed up with Dave, Ben Davidson and he's in the gym and there's a lot of young guys in there. You know, it's like Rocky Three. I know it's a film, but, you know, uh, Apollo Creed brings Rocky in, you know, to the to the, to the hard, the hard gyms where there's young boys in there, hungry, hungry fellas. You know, I, th I think that can be good for fighters as well to kind of reinvigorate them. And just maybe kind of light that fire in their stomach again. Um, so, yeah, I, I think a change-up would definitely be good for him at this point. I mean, he was competitive against Boatze. But, I mean, what, what were they billing this fella he was fighting as? Like the best, the second best light heavyweight in Poland? Um, so if that's kind of, if that's a selling mark, uh, I don't know, mate. That should be a walk in the park, really. But it was a hard night's work for him. Very hard night's work. 
Okay. What about Ben Whitaker, a.k.a. the new Roy Jones? That's what they kept billing him as. What do you think to a uh, boxer-sized Ben Whitaker? Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing a full 180. Uh, I'm kind of getting a wee bit tired of the antics as well. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, look, it's it's kind of, he's kind of committed to it now. I'm not saying he's going to change overnight. Um, but... Look, he's staying active. I, I just, you never know how guys are going to move through the levels until they start moving through the levels. Um, is he, is he going to keep up the kind of in-ring antics the whole way through? Is he going to try? Um, because, I mean, he's. it seems like the punching power isn't there. Um, I mean, at least it's not there in spades to where he can kind of just put fella, put fellas on their ass with one punch. I just wonder, as he kind of goes through the levels, is he going to keep this up the whole way? Because it would kind of be a cop-out if, you know, you move to, you know, kind of, you know, European up to world level, if you just stop all the arson about. You know, then people are going to say, oh, you know, you're only doing this against lesser fighters. You know, you're a bit of a bully. You're only doing this to kind of make a show of them. Um, so if he sticks with his approach the whole way through, I'll respect him for it because at least he's committed to it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, on these performances, uh, I don't know, mate. It's just um, we'll, we'll see how he progresses. I think he's got a lot of talent. I just don't know if he's got the punching power or potentially the talent to kind of keep Arson about when he gets to elite level. But we'll see. Um, we'll see. He's still a polarizing figure. I feel like he's still a marmite. People love him or hate him. Um, but. I don't know. Look, fine performance. I mean, if you're being a critic, which a lot of people are, because the way ours is about, he's not getting stoppages. You know, if you if you're a bench alarm, you can say it's good experience, it's rounds under the belt and all that. But um, I don't know. I, he kind of needs to move on from the, from the proverbial cannon fodder, cannon fodder, and um, and we'll see how he progresses. But uh, look, he's not lighting the world on fire with these uh with these decisions, is he? No, and the thing is, you see, right, when you've got this Ben Whitaker, right, he's ridiculing opponents. But yeah. He's not, them, he's not getting them out there, is he? Now, when you're ridiculing them, you should be able to take them out whenever you want. Now, that guy he fought had more padding in his record than Big Meech, right? <laughs> it would build yes, up this killer. His KO ratio were a killer KO ratio. But the guys who were beating were soft touchers. Now, he was dressed up as a big win for him, but he couldn't get him out there, Whitaker. So, as far as I'm concerned, he is the new Hands of Foam. Mm. I mean, I, I can't disagree with you. When you when you approach the game the way he does, you know, you're kind of opening yourself up for all the criticism. You know, obviously, people are going to criticize him for the actual antics and the arson about. But then, if there are any other kind of holes or perceived holes in your game, people will bring that up, like the punch and power. Um, you know, he hasn't had the touch of touch of death so far, and obviously, power isn't something you can really learn. You're either born with it mostly. Obviously, you can refine your punching and delivery system, but you're either born with it or you're not. And that's kind of where my worry would be as he gets to elite level. Um, but no, look, like you said, if 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 you're gonna act this act, you should be able to do it as you're putting people away, and he isn't doing that yet. Um, but I think regardless, I mean, I think look, it's it's still a plus for him, even if you're a marmite. If people hate you, they're gonna watch you because they want to see you get sparked out, and if people like it, they're gonna watch it because you because they like it. So he splits opinion, but I think he'll always have eyes on him for as long as. You know he's kind of pulling, pulling what he's pulling right now. So uh, I agree that he should be putting this type of guy away um, if he is as good as he says he is. But at the same time, he's still got eyeballs on him, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I really don't. So I think if you're Ben Shalom, you're you're probably still well satisfied. A couple of underwhelming performances, but you know he's still the talk of the town on a Monday morning. You know this lad's an ass. He's doing this. He's doing that. So. I think in, at this point in his career, any publicity is good publicity. So I don't think Ben Shalom's going to be too upset. Not at all. Don't you? No, just currently because, you know, it's, it's oh, what's that? The, the worst thing is for nobody to be talking about you. I know a lot of people do dislike him, but that still sells, you know, tickets and still gets eyes on him. 
in terms of people, you know, a lot of people completely dislike what he's about in terms of his antics inside the ring. So a lot of people are going to tune in to see him get, hopefully, in their minds, get get laid out. Um, so, no, I mean, I think he kind of needs to. I think he kind of needs to start moving through the levels. I mean, the one thing I will give him, you know, he is active, albeit you can argue it is against per opposition, but he is keeping busy. He gets out quite often. Um, but I think, you know, I know the whole thing with Ben Shalom I'm still up for debate. Is he going to be at Sky next year? A lot of people are saying no. Less people oh, are saying oh, yes. Oh, oh. People yeah. out of Ingle Jim are saying no. So that will have come from Oscott, won't it? <laughs> Oscott will know. He's in, he's in the know at Sky. I mean, let's have it right. Isn't that right, Oscott? You tried to step over a bean to get to the big seat. Didn't you ask cock? So don't mech out you didn't, lad, but it backfired, didn't it? Oh, no, man. He's on his way out, Adrian Mole. That is a fact. We a yeah. Shot. He's on his way. So who's going to get them dates? I don't know. They might be they might be shared out. That might be why is he at GMB's ended up with his own dates because mm. they, uh, they don't want him to go to Sky. You see where I'm coming from? I do, I do. Oh. Yeah, there's us there's usually a couple of things when deals like that happen. So, um, no, I look. You've gone to my head. I really don't think he will be there. Um, but you know, Sky as a platform, there's a saying in politics: never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. Now, the the crisis I'm referring to, at least for Sky, is Saudi Arabia, the Saudi money, the big, you know, the big purses that obviously they can't match. They couldn't match ten percent of it. I think if Sky were wise, they would target, you know, I know they've been kind of doing that. I don't think they'd be doing it on purpose. I think they've been recruiting who they can recruit, who they can recruit. But if I were Sky, I would really start targeting the domestic market and kind of stick to that. You know, similar to what they're doing now. I know there's been mistakes made and all that. Um, but for as long as that Saudi money is going to be around, you know, kind of your recruitment policy is very much stifled. Um, whereas if you keep things domestic, local, like, you know, kind of, I'm not saying that the British Bells lost this respect, not at all, and it, nor do I should. Um, you know, you ask or you, all the big fighters that have kind of gone on to world level, your frotches and so on and so forth, you know, they talked about that kind of, what it meant to them to win the British belt. You know, it's obviously important. It's, it's massively important to domestic fighters, or at least it should be. So I think if Sky were wise, they would try and put all their eggs in that basket, at least for now. Um, At least that way, you know, they can build up a steady footing. And this is all kind of, pre look, if, if people say boxing's dying, it's on the way out. I can't fully disagree. We look at the numbers, all the rest. But I think there's definitely still love for the game, uh, you know, uh, way more in the UK than there is in the US. So I think if Sky were wise, they would try and stay in this lane and build up something consistent. Because the, the Saudi bubble is going to burst eventually. And I think, you know, with the, with the mistakes the zone have made or a mix of Eddie Hearn, Matchroom and the zone and them not being able to scale, I think that bubble will burst eventually as well. So I think Sky could kind of strategically get themselves in a good spot focusing on the domestic game. I really do. So if I were them, if I was in those meetings, that's what I would be focusing on, you know, big time. Yeah. Strong domestic stable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe G picked up another couple of belts, a Commonwealth and a European for Jack Massey, who yeah. uh, beat Isaac Chamberlain. Uh, where does Isaac go now and where does Jack Massey go? Because he obviously... Jack's already won a world title and then get it up to fight Parker. So he's in a really good position now, Jack Massey, isn't he? Mm, he is. And that's that's across two divisions as well. Um no, he's in a good spot. Like I know obviously there, there was a lot of talk about him coming through the ranks as a youngster. Um yeah. and you know, for, for one reason or another, things didn't go exactly to plan. Obviously, there's a lot of factors in that, but you know, it's not how you start. Um, obviously a good start's always welcome, but it's how you finished. I'm not saying he's finished right now, but his career's in a good spot. Yeah. Uh and in, in, in two in two divisions. Uh, you know, he's obviously got a really good coach um behind him. So yeah, man, lots of options. I mean, I think it's you know, we talked about Willie Hutchinson after the the five V five. I think the likes of Massey again, because it's across two divisions, he's got way more options. So 
look, good team behind him, good coach. His career's, I'm not saying it got fully off track, but his career's definitely back on track now. Um, so we'll have plenty of opportunities. Um, I don't, look, look, I, I, had, I had Massey win in the fight, you know, as most did. Um, I don't think, um, you know, I don't, I don't think this is near the end of the line for, for Chamberlain. I think he can kind of go back and regroup. Um, and oh, look, he's going to have to build himself back up a wee bit. Obviously, he's lost European and Commonwealth belts, but um, but I, look, I, I don't think the defeat ruins him. You know, it's not like he got um, it's not like he got completely abused, or he got like you know a, a brutal viral knockout. So, no, I mean nobody wants to lose, but I don't think it's the end of the world for Chamberlain. Not not at all. No, I don't. But I just think that. Uh... Isaac has probably overachieved, really. Do you think? Uh, a little bit. I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit. Um, I thought him winning those belts. I thought he managed that fight, you know, very well. Good game plan. Um, I mean, maybe he has a wee bit, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I think obviously. I don't think any of the, the domestic fights that were there for him before this loss, I don't think any of those necessarily disappear overnight either. Um, so I think he probably goes back. I'm not going to say back down, but I think he just regroups and starts again at domestic level. I mean, look, he's done well for himself. Um, and I still think he is, he has more to give. So no, I think he can come again, you know, um, similar, similar to that level. I mean, I don't, I don't see him taking off heads. At world level, but um, yeah, I think he can definitely get back to that European summit. So no, I think he can regroup and come again, man. Honestly, yeah, yeah. And look, it's, it wasn't wasn't a it wasn't a terrible performance by any means. I don't, you know, whatever. I, I had him losing the fight, but I think he can definitely come again. Absolutely. And um, what about Jack Massey next? Do you think they'll put him in with Bill and Smith? Ah, uh, got to do, aren't they? Surely, man. Yeah, I mean, a fight should be easy to make. I think, you know, on paper, it's it's a very very close matchup. I mean, I, I would, I will, I'll, I'll have, I have Chris Billum Smith winning that fight for for a number of reasons, but um, I, I'm look, I'm not saying it's like an easier fight on paper than React Poor, but I thought that Chris Billum Smith, you know, fighting. React poor a guy he's already lost to, albeit in a close fight. I thought him fighting him in his own backyard at Crystal Palace was a gutsy move. You know, obviously, I don't know if there was money involved or what what the what the main reason for that happening was, but he took the challenge on. A lot of people had him an underdog in the fight, you know, and he put on uh, at that level. He he you know he he kind of had an easy night's work for me. He controlled the fight beautifully. So I, I think um. I think CBS kind of deserves. I'm not saying I like touching Massey, but um, I think it's a good fight for him on paper. You know, he, I think he goes into that as a favorite, and I think he kind of deserves it after going into enemy territory. Um, and it's a great opportunity for for Massey as well. You know, a tilt at world titles. So yeah, I think it should be easy to make. Um, and obviously, I think Ben Shalom's going to be doing. He's going to be making moves to try and save himself. And I think that's a good fight. Again, I talked about domestic earlier. I think it's a good fight. Obviously, it's four world titles, but it's a big, fight, big fight in the UK. So, um, I think it probably suits all parties, and I would like to see it. So, I you? hope they get it on. Yeah, why, why not? You know, like I said, I think, I think Chris Billum Smith's story is well is very good. Um, you know, I don't have. It's funny, I heard you and Kent on here a while ago. He was saying to, to buy uh, Carrie Frampton's book. I went, as soon as I got off the episode, I bought, no, it's an e-book, so you just listen to it as opposed to, to reading it. I didn't buy it physically. Um, but I think it only took me two days to get through it, man. Um, I couldn't, honestly, couldn't. I'm a big fan of Frampton, but I couldn't recommend the book enough. Um, you know, kind of like Kent said, it, it's written in... It's written in the way people talk. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very, very authentic. Um, you know, of Carol Franton's funnier than most comedians work in today. He's absolutely hilarious. Um, so I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Brilliant listen, brilliant read. Um, and kind of haven't delved into that. Uh, you know, I didn't have much love for the McGuigans before I listened to it, and I certainly don't have much love for them after. 
But I have to give Shane, Shane McGuigan credit where credit's due. I think he's done a wonderful job with Chris Willem Smith, like a really yeah. wonderful job. Um, you know, you talk about people overachieving. I think he's overachieved in spades. Oh, massively. Yeah. I had him to get beat by Rack Porte. I did too. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest. I absolutely. I, I look. I didn't think he. I didn't think it would. I thought it would be a close fight, but I had react poor winning. Um, and you know he largely made it easy. Sorry, made it look easy. Um, and again, I, look. I, regardless of what I think of the the man and the family, like I said, I don't have much time for the McGuigans after reading that or listening to that book. But um, there's no doubt Shane McGuigan's an excellent trainer. Really, really excellent trainer. Knows his craft. You know, you would talk about fight management not being there with Buddy McGirt, game plan and tactics. You know, you can see that in spades with Billum Smith. Um, he looks different in, in, in most fights. And again, I think that's kind of credit to the training team in terms of a, a different game plan for specific opponents. Um, and like I said, I, I thought he went in there and made it look mostly, mostly comfortable. So... You know, big, big props to Shane McGuigan. Obviously, massive, bigger props to the fella in the ring doing the business and Chris Billum Smith. I love his story. He seems like, and not seems like, he just, he is an, a, a massively likable guy. And I know that's kind of separate, but it's nice to see, it's nice to see a pleasant, likable underdog actually, you know, get to world level and win the belts. Doesn't happen very often at all. And if they do win a belt, they usually get it taken off them in their first defense. So I'm over the moon for him. Um, and I would like to see him kind of continue to move forward. So, good performance by Billum Smith. Like I say, I thought he controlled the fight very well. Um, a wee bit disappointed in React Poor. I thought he would have more. Um, but look, great win, great win for for a likable guy. Um, so, I mean, I think there's talk now. Maybe that's probably the final straw. It'll make React Poor move up. I mean, he's a massive guy. I think he probably struggles to make the weight. I don't know um, specifically, but it's probably a good time to uh, to make the move up. I mean, what, what what do you think? You think he'll stick around at the weight or you think he'll make the jump? I think he'll move up. Yeah. What about yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe, what Joe Gallagher's done for uh, Jack Massey? Yeah, I mean, brilliant. Very, very similar in terms of... I mean, oh, wow. yeah. I mean, maybe not as similar. Like, I think obviously there was, there was a lot expected. Of, there was a lot expected of Jack Massey as yeah. a youngster. I, I don't know that you could say the same for Chris Billum Smith. Yeah. Um, but look, look we're, we're talking about today. Um, definitely improvements of Massey. Um, I think there's like, you know, he looks more just say stable, but like he he looks more focused. It looks like there's a clear clear game plan in terms of, you know, where Joe G and that team want his career to go. I think from what I've heard and read, Massey was kind of in limbo there for a long time in terms of matchups, this and that, management, the whole lot. So I think a bit of stability will be good for him. And obviously, whatever about managing careers, if we talk specifically about boxing, you'll do well to find somebody better on, on the UK shores than, than Joe Gallagher. So... Um, good matchup, and uh, very very likely there's more to come. You know, so we'll see how yeah. it progresses. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh. IFL. They've gone full on fury PR job. The gad has just put a video out. They're demanding to know why somebody filmed fury out of his brains in a pub. You know, a six foot nine, twenty two <laughs> stone man, out of his mind on a three day bender is uh, is nobody allowed to film their former heavyweight champ? What does Fury expect? The guy's <laughs> doing a full on uh, Fury PR job on AFL. You know, it's all. Of course he is. I, I'm I'm tending to agree with you, Atman. Now it's all become the a liquor feast, isn't it? Yeah. One 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 thousand percent. I mean, when you talk about a Simon channel... Jordan, Spencer Oliver, and the Gad are all putting videos out defending Tyson Fury. Oh my God! Yeah, I, I mean, 
look, it, it comes with the territory. Look, he's a massive guy. Morecambe's a small town. He's a hard man to miss, even if he wasn't wearing them shirts and, and waistcoats. Um, but if there's a, if you, you know, the, the, the name the channel, it's like if, if you ask me, name the channel that obviously licks the most, it's not even a competition, it's always going to be IFL. If you ask me, name the pundit that licks the most, it's going to be Greasy Gad 10 times out of 10. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really surprise me that they've joined forces. We talked about this previously, right after the Usyk two or sorry, Usyk the first Usyk fight. Fury lost. What happened, didn't we, uh, Adam? We did, we did, and look, I, I was genuinely hoping to be wrong. I mean, when Tyson Fury got to the top of the mountain in terms of beating Vladimir, albeit forty years old, doesn't really matter. Won the belt on this, you know, unified the division, all the rest. Um, you know, even in the best victory of his life, he lost a plot. So my worry was. If that's what happens when you win, what the hell is going to happen when you lost and you put all this pressure on yourself? So I didn't know if it was going to if it was going to manifest in the way it did. Um, but he's obviously going through it as Big Tyson. Um, you know, this was a man that after he had beat Wilder, or sorry, sorry, after the Wilder won fight, obviously it got declared a draw. Everybody knows that he won the fight. He just got robbed on the on the scorecards. But he was on with Joe Rogan. He was talking about all sorts, you know, it was a two-hour podcast. But he was talking about how, you know, obviously the, the troubles he had and him driving the car and the bridge. And, you know, he was talking about uh, the fact that he had given up alcohol and he was never going to go back to it. Um, now, I'm not necessarily saying that I thought he would he would never have a drink again, but he seemed, he seemed a lot happier and clearer being off it, you know, as any person that stops drinking will. So... I was kind of hopeful. And then gradually, as things progressed, you know, after Wilder 3, he said, oh, I'm just going to have a couple of Bud Lights here to celebrate with the team Sugar Hill. You know, they were at that beach party or pool party, whatever. And I think it slowly, slowly went from not drinking at all to, you know, a couple of beers to celebrate to where it looks like now he's full on back in, um, he's back in the depths of, of misery or, you know, whatever it is. But these people say they're defending them. I mean... It shows from the weight gains and all the, the behavior that this man is not able to enjoy beer or alcohol or Charlie or anything like that. He's not able to enjoy it like the normal man in the street. Um. So I think the, the, the likes of Simon Jordan and Spencer and Greasy Gad, like they're saying they're standing up for him. I'm not saying they should hang him out to dry, but if, if you really cared about Tyson Fury, you know, would you want them drinking and abusing drugs? People say, ah, he just went out for a night out and he can do what he wants and drinking's not illegal. Of course, drinking isn't illegal. But if it's going to send somebody into a spiral, then in my opinion, they shouldn't be doing it and you shouldn't support them for doing it and say, ah, it's just boys will be boys. It's a lot of crap in my opinion. Um, They're only doing it for their own gains is what I'm getting at, in my opinion. They're only doing it to stay well in with the family they're only doing it to try and keep on side. They know Tyson Fury is going to clear house with team and all the rest. So I think they're just trying to get back on his good side or in, a, in, a, in terms of greasy gad, they're just trying to stay lodged firmly up his ass. Um, so I don't think they're doing it because they care. I think they're just doing it to, to keep themselves in good stead. Um, and that's even more rotten than, than calling them out. I'm not calling them out for it. Like it just, to me, it's obvious that he doesn't deal with um with substances the same as you know Joe Schmo from down the street does. Um and look, if unless he gets us straightened out soon, I I don't think we see I don't see we I don't think we see him fight Usyk again unless, you know, family somebody puts their arm around him and gets him straightened up. Sharpish pal. I know we've less than a minute. You want to jump on to part yeah. two? Yeah, let's jump on to part two. Cheers, Adam. All right, nice one, bud. Well, that were Adam on part one. Women love him, men want to be him. For those of you that uh, like something different, why don't you tune into Porkies International on YouTube? Don't forget to like and subscribe, or you'll be cricket fans. Pop, pop, bang. Please join us on part two. Oh, yeah, cat.